Hello again, Armored Warfare fans. This is Musashi, and today we're going to be looking at view range and camo. A quick disclaimer on this video, this is early access. The game is so fun and looks so good, it's easy to forget it's early access. But this is the first stage of the early access. So in this case, the statistics like view range and camo are no doubt highly fluid. So keep that in mind as we talk about these uh, features. The reason you're looking at the BMD-1 twirling about here on the screen is I just unlocked it last night and it's just so fun. This tank is amazing. I just loved it and I was going to the sort of normal spots. I was in the LAV-150 and then the AMX-10P and then I got into this thing and I was going to my normal spotting uh, places, my little hidey holes where, you, you know, you just, obviously maps have various places to go for, for AFVs to, to look for things. And I noticed that I was spotting things like a champ. But I wasn't getting spotted in return nearly as much as I'd been with the previous vehicles. So, of course, suddenly it occurred to me, I, I should go look at the camo values. The game supplies it to you, which I'm very happy about. You can just click on any vehicle and you can see the view range and the camo values of, of each tank and sure enough the BMD-1 has a really good camo value. Actually it's more than really good, it's tied for the best camo value in the game. Its view range is another story. Its view range is in the middle of the pack, it's tied for 7th best in the game. Of course I didn't know how it ranked with all the other tanks at first, I had to set out to make a chart. So I've then ranked all the tanks based on view range. I use that as the primary criteria. And then from there you can look at the, the vehicle's tier and its camo rating as well, since again, both of them operate together. Uh, at the very end of this video uh, on the screen credits, I've got the rolling chart of all the tanks currently in the game as of May 1st, 2015. I will update the video as we go and update that chart at the end to keep this uh, video relevant. But watching or looking at the chart was highly instructive. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. Right before we get to that, I did mention that the BMD-1 is tied for first place in the game for camera rating, but was middle of the pack in view range. So who is the top dog? Who's got the best view range and the best camo rating in the game? Is there one tank that sits above all others in these respects? And there is. The suspense is killing me. Who is it? The VBL! Yes, the VBL has got the highest view range and is tied for the best camo rating in the game with the BMD-1. In terms of actual game numbers, the best view range in the game is 481. And the best camo rating in the game is 0.35. So that's the baseline that we're working on. So 481 and 0.35 is the best. The worst is artillery. I'm not even going to cover artillery. They're so bad at view range and camo, it's not even worth talking about. They, they, nothing is as horrible as they are. Artillery view range and camo in Armored Warfare does give me another opportunity to pat Obsidian on the back. Uh, World of Tanks artillery had such decent or in sometimes good view ranges and in some cases extremely good camo values that it was, even if you got all the way back to the end of the map, finally trying to find them, it was like impossible to get a hold of them, and then they go TD mode on you. So thankfully, we don't have any of that silliness in Armored Warfare, and it's one of the many things that when you're comparing World of Tanks mechanics to Armored Warfare, Armored Warfare is just so much better. <laughs> it's why the game's so fun. But what about the rest of the tanks in the game? Maybe the Tier 1 tanks. Let's take a look at that. Sadly, our PT-76, the Beached Whale, not faring so well. It has a 0 0.20 camo rating, and the PT-76 has a 385 view range, which sounds pretty good until you look at the M113. The M113 is tied for third best in view range, and it's tied for second best in the game for the camo rating, so its view range is 438 and its camo is 0.33. So it's just another case where the M113 is going to be useful in any game it gets in regardless of, of how high of a tier is it's seeing. 
kind of reminds me of a game I was in yesterday where there was a Scorpion player and he was tier 2 and he is uh, looking at a bunch of tier 4s. He was like one of the only tier 2s in the game and he said, I I'm just going to be useless here. And that's, that's never going to be true with many of the AFVs, but especially if you understand that the camo rating and view range for some of these vehicles is, is very good, even at the lower tiers. The Scorpion is uh, it's tied for 7th for view range at 394, but it's also tied for 2nd best camo rating at 0.33. So once again, it, it can hide quite well no matter what tiers it faces. Main battle tanks all have a view range of 350 and horrible <laughs> camo rating of between 0 0.09 and 0 0.11, but one of these things is not like the other. On the screen now you'll see the M60A2 Starship. It is quite the anomaly for a main battle tank. It has got a 420 view range. That is t uh, no, it's not tied. It's fifth best in the game. Its camo rating is 0 0.09, so it's just like all the other main battle tanks. But that extra view range in late game situations can be quite powerful. And just a disclaimer here as well, I love the M60A2 Starship. It is my favorite tank of all time, so I'm quite tickled that it has uh, that extra tech. It's called the Starship because of all the tech that's in it. That that's uh, represented here in the game with this uh, outstanding view range for a main battle tank. On the screen now, you'll see the VBL. Look at those juicy stats. That thing is going to be amazing. I'm really looking forward to uh, getting the VBL now because that's crazy good uh, view range and camera rating. The swing fire is very interesting in that it's number two in the game. It's got a 481 view range, just like the VBL, and just slightly worse uh, camera rating at 0.33. So we all know it's sort of a back row sniper, but it's interesting that this thing can spot for itself. It probably needs to with those missiles. The swing fire is also tier four. So since the VBL is tier five, you could make an argument the swing fire might be tops just based on tiering. Third best in the game is the weasel. 481 view range again, so it's just like the VBL and the swing fire. It's got a 0 .30 camo rating, so that's um, you know quite a bit less, um, but still third in the game for view range and camo rating. I haven't had it yet, but of course we all know it's going to be able to move like grease lightning. And rounding out the top performers in the game currently, there's also the um, Bradley is at 481 as well. It's the, there's only four of them that have 481. Bradley's the last one, but it's got 0.27 camo, so not nearly as good camo, but still, uh, it's tier 6 at 481. Uh, the fifth one is a really interesting one, too. It's the, uh, I'm not going to be commenting on what's on the screen at this point, but the LAV 300 has got 443, so it's the uh, next best view range in the game, and it's got a 0.25 camo rating. I bring that one up primarily because it's a TD, and TDs are normally sort of middle of the pack. They literally no normally cannot spot for themselves, but the LAV 300 can just about spot for itself. I bring that one up because most of the TDs are strictly middle of the pack. They're, they're clearly set up to not be able to spot for themselves, like we had in World of Tanks where the TDs were sitting back and able to spot. They didn't even need any scouts. But the LAV 300 is uh, at 443 and 0.25, just about can spot for itself. It's the only one that can make a claim for that. You see the Bradley here on the screen. Uh, a lot of people are looking forward to getting access to that one. It does look like a lot of fun to me, too. Now, one last tank I'd like to uh, talk about quickly is the Sheridan. A lot of people think because of its light tank uh, ability to move and its big gun that it's it's somewhat OP. I, I'm inclined to agree. It, it just seems a little overpowered for its tier. But in terms of camo rating and view range, it's got a view range of 385 and a camo of 0.23, so it's strictly mediocre in, in those two categories. So them wanting the light tanks to sort of use mobility as its power is, is definitely true, or reflected in the stats for the Sheridan at least. So what are the takeaways from this information? For one thing, I can't wait to play the VBL. I mean, that thing looks amazing now to me. I can't wait to get that. What we can really take away from the information is you can see that TDs generally can't spot for themselves. Artillery is hopeless. There's no point in trying to hide. And more importantly for the AFVs, I've learned that the more I've played that the you're, you're rewarded through reputation and really just game effectiveness to do or focus more on spotting and spotting damage than you are damage from yourself directly. I got a little carried away with trying to do damage in them and as soon as I switched over to working on 
especially view range and camo rating advantages that they offer, I became far more uh, useful to my team and I started obtaining a lot more reputation in the game. So I'm going to include now a list at the end of the roll credits that will give you an entire chart based on the ranks of view range first. But it'll also show you the camo rating and the tier for each vehicle. You can certainly click on the vehicles in the game and see this. But if you want a sort of handy reference, I've included it here at the video. Thanks again for watching Let's Play Armored Warfare. This is Musashi. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.